out of which eight years I was in, I, I'm in uh, you know, success factors. In these eight years of experience, I have you know, worked on employee central compensation, recruiting, performance management, uh, these modules. Okay. Mostly I've spent my, though I've worked on recruiting, performance management, you know, on, on some of the projects, but you know, I'm not uh, experienced, well experienced candidate, I can, I can say. When it comes to employee center and compensation, because I've spent most of my time in these areas, I'm more confident or more comfort in employee center and compensation. Coming to teaching, I've been, you know, I mean, to teaching from last 10 years. Uh, I used to train SAP HM earlier, the PA, OM time and uh, payroll, uh, to some extent ESS as well in SAP. Uh, after getting into success factors, now it is my eighth year into success factors. Now from last five, six years, I, you know, I've been uh, training the people on employee central and compensation as well. Have trained more than you know 150, 200 up to 150, 200 students. Okay, so that's quick intro about me. So what we are going to learn in next or the coming sessions is on the uh, Success Factors Employee Central, which is the core or the base module for Success Factors. Now, why do we call it as a core or a base module? Is because now, success factors, we maintain all of the master data. In Employee Central, we maintain all of the master data, which is required for other modules, like it can be learning, uh, compensation, or recruiting, or performance management. So all of these modules, they need some information from Employee Central, the master data, okay? Or it could be the name of the employee, it could be ID of the employee, it could be Oh, for the manager of that employee or department in which the employee is working or the salary details of the employee. So all of these details oh, are sent to these modules from Employee Central. And once the module, they complete their part, like you know, performance management, they complete, they, once the appraisals are completed, the ratings are sent back to Employee Central. Again, we store this data, performance management, the ratings, every year's ratings and the employee's ratings we store in Employee Central. Again, compensation, they send the increased salary. So system updates the promotions or any salary increases that are there in the compensation to termination of the candidate. Again, after termination also, if you want to rehire the employee after later point of time, like after two or three years, we can still use the, ex uh, use the existing data in the system. Okay, so we can rehire the employee. That means we are making the employee active in the system. So all of this is done in the Success factors employee central. So starting from hiring, we maintain all of this since we maintain all of this master data. That is at the operation side. So as a HR, when I log into the system, what my duty is to hire employees, maintain master data, or do some events or the transactions for the employees. Like you now I can transfer the employee, I can suspend the employee, I can promote the employee, I can make some data changes, I can demote the employees or if I have to terminate the employee, I'll terminate the employee, or if employees on leave, I'll be uh, uh, inserting the leave records. It could be a paid leave, or it could be unpaid leave, of, or if there are any rehires, I'd be doing the rehire. That is at the operation side. HR would be doing all of these actions in the Success Factors Employee Central. As an employee, now if I am an employee, I log into the system, so I will look at my own data. If there is any data that I need to update, like my email ID or my address details or my medical medical uh, details or my contact details, so all of this information I would be updating in the system. That's my part. Or if I have to download some data, like it could be a pay slip or it could be a document uh, you know, of, of the appraisal document or it could be any kind of data that belongs to me. I can download it from the system or if I have to apply a leave or if I have to request something I'd be doing everything in the employee central system again again my performance appraisals I'll, if I have to fill my goals if I have to you know, do my appraisal system I'd be doing in the system so this is as an employee when a manager logs into the system manager also has got a manager is also an employee of the organization so he or she will be doing all of these activities what employee was doing. Other than these activities, manager would be approving the leave request, approving the transfer request, approving or rejecting the promotion request, or you know, 
do the appraisals of the employee or recommend some salary increases or recommend some promotions for the employees that's as a manager so every employee in the organization uses the system in some way it could be employee it could be hr it could be a manager or it could be a department head so all of these employees logs into the system and uses the system so what we uh, what we do as a consultant okay now we would be after this training all of you would be once you get into jobs so what would be your role let's say role of a success factors consultant let's say sfec consultant okay role of a success factors cc consultant what would we be doing in the system success factors is a global product okay uh, it has got all the features which are required for the customers so as a consultant we approach the customer okay here we have customer implementation partner and then you have consultant now who is a customer customer is a end user we implement or we support the customer so success factors now customer buys the success factors license okay now before they start using the system somebody has to configure as per their requirement so implementation partner is the one who would be implementing success factors for customers customer will buy a license of success factors but somebody has to set the system as per customer's requirement now uh, if you go to personal information success factors gives you hundreds of fields like first name last name middle name you no know, for preferred name or uh, business first name business last name gender salutation preferred language preferred uh, you no know, uh, country so all of these fields are standard fields which are available in the system but all of this may not be required for every customer so some customer may say that i don't want to use middle name or i don't want to use initials i just want first name or i just want last name or you no know, some fields are mandatory some fields are optional when your customer might say i know i want to have this as a mandatory or this as a fun, uh, optional field so all of these requirements implementation partner would be getting from the customer and implements the system now who are the implementation partners the examples could be your deloitte or wipro or ibm or accenture not anybody or not everyone can go and implement now these partners all well, these have to these organizations have to be tied up with sap now, sap cannot implement success factors for all the customers across the globe we have thousands of customers across the globe now, so sap cannot implement sf for each and every customer so sap gives their franchise it's like franchise now if you take an example of mcdonalds or kfc what they do is they take franchising and then they start selling the products now all of the products what we you know if you go to kfc or mcdonalds you'll get the same burger or you'll get the same you no know, fried chicken every kfc or every mcdonalds because the product comes from kfc or the product comes from mcdonalds same thing sf product comes from sap the same product is implemented for the customer and who are the implementation partner these are the authorized organizations which can implement success factors to customer now if i own now these are big companies like ibm or deloitte or accenture these are big companies now if i if i want i am planning to have you no know, start an organization and i want to implement success factors for customers so firstly i have to approach sap i need to take license from them saying i i have so and so team and i would be implementing success factors for customers so i have to first go and apply for the license so now once i buy the license then i would become implementation partner so implementation partner would be implementing for customer and the consultants are the one who would be implementing for customer so consultants are employed by implementation partner not by customer now only these consultants can be now hired by implementation partner 
cannot be hired by customer i'll tell you in the later stages and the later time i'll be telling you why consultants have to work only under implementation partner and why not under customer now you might see sometimes you might see the consultants moving to customer you would be supporting the customer now cons customer cannot hire consultant and start implementing success factors no because they are not implementation partner not everybody can implement sf only the partners can implement for customers so that's why consultants are hired by implementation partners any doubts so far one question here uh, you said regarding that events so uh, let's say can we capture the event and send it to some of the brokers or like how how does this event so events are nothing but the transactions that a hr performs mm -hmm. the examples could be your hire mm -hmm. transfer mm -hmm. promotion termination suspension data changes etc now these are some of the events we have around 20 plus standard events in system okay now you cannot create any additional events in system but you can create for each of these events you can create event reasons mm -hmm. like you take a promotion mm -hmm. promotion can be a salary increase promotion can be a great change promotion can be great change with salary increase mm -hmm. so all of these are promotions transfers uh, mm -hmm. you can be transferred from one department to other department or you can be transferred from one location to other location you can be moved from one manager to other manager so all of these are transfers so you can create any number of event reasons those are called event reason the department transfer or location transfer or a manager transfer mm -hmm. these are called the event reasons okay. now events are standard in success factors so we have around 20 plus events and all of these events will be performed either by consultants or by hr operations now these are to be out of these 20 or 20 plus standard events in system you need to approach customer and find out what are the required events for them now this we would be getting it from the kickoff meetings the initially we start interacting with the customer and find out their requirement we ask them see these are the list of events that success factors provides do you need all of these events now you have something called global assignment now global assignment can be used for a customer who has got their operations in different countries now i operate from india i operate from us i operate from china and japan now if an employee moves from one country to other country that is called global assignment now it can be a country transfer if the employee is completely being transferred it is called company tra country transfer mm -hmm. or if an employee is going to some other country for on some project work that is called global assignment yeah from one I country to other country I understand, I understand this concept but the thing is that how do you capture this one and, and send it to the third parties let's say i need to generate the oh, this sap yes. success factor generates the event yes. so can we capture yes. this even and send it to the third party that was my question yes now third party what is the third what is your third party is it sap let's, is it oracle or is it any other no, application no, now let's say I there should be broker. some i have a broker Sorry? manager i have a broker let's say messaging broker it could be jms messaging broker okay. it could be a solas it could be a kafka mm -hmm. can we capture okay. this even and send it to the kafka let's say yes now this can be captured and this can be transferred to other applications mm -hmm. by a middleware called mm -hmm. either pi okay or mm -hmm. sap you know hci uh, hana cloud integrations okay mm -hmm. or by dell boomi so you should have some interface or okay. some middleware mm -hmm. which would be taking the data from success factors and sending it to now you should also be as a third party you should also be having the similar setup like now i might call in success factors i might call it as events but in sap when i am transferring the data from sf to or success factors to sap now sap they call it personal actions okay now you should also have that personal action in sap okay similarly the third party application when i send the data now i am sending the 
uh, employees data like first name and last name you should also have the similar setup in your system where the data gets stored so now it can be a different name now i might be using it as the event but your, your application is using it as a personal action so the middleware mic middleware joins both of these fields mm -hmm. the event with personal action okay. and they will be scheduling a job now we have some you know job schedulers where we schedule the job and system on every day like it can it can be scheduled once in a day or twice in a day based on the operations that we do so generally it is once in a day so once in a day system updates or system moves all of this data to your third party application or sometimes what happens is now take an example of uh, cost centers uh, cost centers are generally maintained in finance system so but success factors is not a finance system success factors is a hr system now success factors if you want the cost centers to be maintained by the finance system now, what integration team does is they get all of this cost center data and in the when the job runs they updates this cost centers now it could be the uh, update in the updates in the existing cost centers or the new cost centers system will create those new cost centers into this into sap yes sir okay mm -hmm. So what what is the integration? Uh, what do you call it? It could it all depends upon it all depends upon the customer what interface they want to use. Now some okay. users now most of the times I have seen people using Dell Boomi, okay. or now customers now SAP is you no know, recommending them to go with Hana Cloud integration because that's SAP's product. Okay, great. Okay. What is the role of integration uh, inter intelligent uh, center over here? Can we also capture this intelligent intelligence center? Integration okay. center, integration okay. center. Yeah, integration okay. center is where your you no know, data you no know, gets uh, captured data data gets captured and transferred to other applications. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now again, project to project. you will have the uh, integration team based on uh, the application that you use now let's say you are into one of the project and uh, that project the customer you and the customer wanted to have dell boomi as the interface so you should hire dell boomi consultants you know who would be working on the interfaces or if it is a hana cloud integration then you should hire hana cloud you no know, hana cloud uh, integrations team to capture the data from Success factors and move it to the other applications. Okay. Now all of these are done by a consultant. Consultants can move from one implementation partner to let's say today. Today I'm working for Deloitte. Now if I no, now if I want to move out of Deloitte, I would be looking after a job and let's say I want to move it to move to IBM. IBM also. I mean, is also an implementation partner. So I would be going there, and I'll be working on the projects that are specific to IBM. So on a whole, as a consultant, either I will be doing implementation, or the second is support. Implementation means getting the requirements from your customer, building the system, configuring the system, and handing it over to. So, uh, handing it over to customer. The best part in Success Factors is each and every customer who is using Success Factors should have support consultants working with them. Every support, every Success Factors, every customer who is using Success Factors, they should have a support consultant. Now, the what is the role of a support consultant? What will I do as a support consultant? Is most of the times, oh, you no, know, the, the implementation partners they hire these support consultants. why do they hire support consultant because they have to support the customers all of these thousands of customers across the globe so somebody should be supporting them now what do we do in support support generally will have incident management in incident management you would be getting tickets now customer is using success factors application today they are trying to hire an employee they got stuck up with the hiring they are getting some error now somebody has to see what is the error analyze and fix that error now that someone is the support consultant so 
they will be creating an incident or they'll be creating a ticket again this ticketing tool can be anything it can be salesforce ticketing tool or it can be uh, it can be you know service now ticketing tool or it can be sap ticketing tool it can be anything again so customer would be creating the incident now this incident can be for the fixes or can, it can be the analysis or it can be you no know, uh, movement of the configurations so customers every day they would be creating the incidents and as a consultant you have to go and resolve those incidents or resolve those issues which are raised by customers again it depending depending on the sls like you know, if they are following sls like service level agreement sla service level agreement where they will have the tickets with high priority tickets with medium priority and tickets with low priority so these are the examples sometimes you'll have you'll also have very high priority now high priority will have a sla saying that now this whenever you get a high priority ticket you have to resolve it in a day so for, for you as a ticket once the ticket is assigned to you you should be resolving this by or within a day okay or if it is a medium ticket maybe you have two or three days or if it is a low priority ticket it can be for four days or five days but it doesn't mean that you have to wait for five days to answer the ticket if you have that answer or if you can fix it immediately you can do that so depending on the contract between the customer and implementation partner you can have high and low or no very high high low and medium or no high medium and low it can be any kind of tickets second is the change management now while implementing customer doesn't know about the product so implementation is completed now they have started using the system and they realize that there are a lot of features which were not no which were not which they have not seen earlier and now they want to implement or something is already configured they want to improve or they want to add or update the configuration let's say the approvals they are using two level of approvals in transfer but you know, the company policy has changed and some of the persons are to be included in the approvals maybe i want to change it to three levels or four levels of approval that's a change in the system or something was not implemented earlier now we have to you implement that in the system because that's a new requirement so that would be taken as change management it is same as your implementation again in the change management whatever change that is requested by your customer you have to go find out what is the change that you have to do what is the process you need to understand the process flow get the requirement and configure it in the system test and deploy it to your customer that's change management and the third is release management the release management success factors upgrades their product once in six months every six months you will see a new changes in the system now these changes can be fixes now somebody has identified a bug in the system they have reported it to sap sap fixes that bug sap got some request from the customer saying that this feature is not available in the system somebody has raised a ticket success factors would be implementing that and deploying it to the system once in six months so it could be a fixes or it could be a new change into the system or a new functionality adding into the system so early twice now earlier before 2020 we used to have four releases quarterly release. we call we used to call them q1 q2 q3 and q4 now we have two releases h1 1h and 2h first half and second half okay we'll talk more on the release management what comes in release management what what is your role as a consultant what you have to do when you know, release happens so all of those things we'll discuss separately okay so this is the this is your role all of this is your role so yeah either you would be in implementation or you would be in the support now people think that Support is easy than implementation. Some think some you no know, some people who have worked on support you know, think that implementation is easier than support. 
there's nothing like that if you know the process if you know the configuration uh, no both of them are same support somebody implements the system and you know they will hand it over to uh, customer and they will leave when you started working as a support consultant you will be getting the tickets like you know there is some change in the configuration or some issues in the configuration this configuration is working only for some scenarios there are some other scenarios of where your configuration is failing you need to identify you need to analyze you need to you know uh, deep dive into that and see what is the issue you have to fix it so you would be experimenting a lot in the uh, system as a support consultant okay any doubts here role of a sfec consultant uh, hi can you quickly please uh, reiterate on all the three incident change and release management please okay incident management means solving the tickets or fixing the issues customer when they you know access the system if they find any bug or if they find any issue in the system they might create a ticket and assign it to you now let's say today i'm hr i am doing some transfer now instead of a manager it is going to manager's manager now i want to know why the approve as per my approval process the company's process it should have gone to manager but it is going to manager's manager i want to know why it is going to manager's manager okay so you will have to analyze what is the issue why system is behaving differently in this case or somebody is trying to hire an employee and some error is popping up and they are unable to hire the employee so they have taken so they will be taking a screenshot and attaching it to the ticket and they will ask you to work on this ticket now you need to identify you need to replicate the issue, replicate that issue why they are okay. getting that error now these errors most of these errors you can now there is a no uh, there is a portal called launchpad where you can search for the issues now success factors the general tickets or the general issues what you get in system for all of those success factors has documented them how to fix them or how to resolve them so if that case matches then you can go you know implement that or fix that issue or tell them that because you are using this you no know, this value instead of this value that is why you are getting this error so you need to as a consultant you need to identify analyze and fix the issue or if it is analysis you just have to document and share the document with them okay that's incident management so every day you will be getting some tickets no now these tickets can be high priority tickets or low priority tickets or no medium priority tickets or it can be very high priority depending on customer and the implementation part or agreement you will have either you know, only two sometimes you will only see high priority and low priority if it is a high priority that means it is to be worked on work immediately and you have to resolve it within a day or four hours or five hours of suddenly system got system stopped working and then no uh, you know, customer has created a ticket to look into the issue so you need to work on it immediately there are some right. low priority tickets now may not be required at this moment but is you no know, good to have the feature in the system are good to have one particular field in the system you are asked to you know see look into that and analyze so you need to share the analysis that's incident management second is change management now existing process you have you no know, some process defined in the system but you want to implement some additional changes in the system maybe uh, uh, approval process is defined for transfer but not for promotions now customer want to implement approval process for promotions as well so whenever somebody initiates or somebody creates the promotion request it should go to some no manager or managers manager or hr or some department head so they should be approving the request only then it should go and update in the system so that's a change in the system earlier it was not there now you want to implement that okay it could be the new functionality yes. it could be change in the process it could be anything third is release 
a success factors updates their product every six, once in six months like like any other product if you take whatsapp application which we use you know daily in our life so the whatsapp application what we see today is you no know, has got a lot of features when compared to the whatsapp application what we used it four years back or five years back yes or no initially when start when yes. whatsapp started we didn't have these many features like you no know, you can add location now you can add a document you can share a document you can now even you no know, pay some you know uh, you can also do some payments in whatsapp payments, so all yes. of these features were not available earlier but slowly they are enhancing the product now similarly success factors also gets the requirements from customer today if i am a customer i am i am using success factors from last three years or four years now how i thought you no know, i or you no know, i have given them some advice saying that you no know, we have this process this process is being implemented by lot of customers across the globe it could be you know, better or it could be uh, very useful if you implement this in the system this in the uh, success factor system so success factors understands the customers requirement they implement some changes okay right. uh, it could be it could be some change which was requested by some customer or they have, they have identified some bugs there is some bug you no know, in one scenario it is failing or it is giving some error some vague error this was okay. not there for any customer you no know, they will identify the issue and they will fix that issue and all of these issues which are fixed or all of the new enhancements which are you no know, done they will be updating or upgrading the system so we have different patches now if you go and see you will have the version of success factors right okay now every time you log okay. in or when you open the success factors link you will see the version information clear on release management yes go ahead yeah. uh, i just wanted to know that you are saying that some changes will be there by acp right it, it will be by <laughs> acp the updated version yes. so yes. consultant automatically will get to know like how what are the changes or acp will inform no on a particular day now if i go to one of the portals mm -hmm. i thought of showing you this in the coming session but still you have asked we have a portal for you no know, community.successfactors.com where sap would be releasing all the new functionalities you no know, about the new features that are going to come in the system just before it gets updated in the system now sap will give all the timelines next release when when sap is going to update the 2h2022 or no when it is going to update 1h2023 before one week they will be now sap would be conducting some webinars now as a consultant if you are certified now you need to do certification also i'll talk about certification at later point of time you will be getting some kind of information like from sap you would be getting email saying that on so and so date sap would be updating now uh, the version from 1h to 2h2022 and these are the new version new new features which are going to come in the system so every you no know, once you know, in a week within a week they will be conducting some webinars if you are unable to attend the webinars you will have the videos as well okay and if you if you don't have the uh, no if you have not interested in looking at the video you will have some pdf documents you can also go and view those pdf documents what are these changes you have to understand now it will explain in detail they'll explain they'll will have recorded videos also for each feature so not every feature but some features wherever they can record it they will have a video and you just have to go watch the video what is that new release and you have to document generally wherever you know i have you no know, uh, wherever i have worked we you now use uh, or we we follow a practice called you know ppt presentations powerpoint presentations so in the powerpoint presentation we identify the release features which are applicable for my customer okay uh, if customer is using that feature what is that feature how 
the system or what is the uh, what are the fields that we have in that feature and what are the new fields that are added now how system is looking and you know, before release and after release so we prepare this presentation and we show it to the customer so here you have release updates and roadmap if i go to release updates and roadmap system will show me the dates you see here after okay. logging in it says second half 2022 release timing update okay is changed the preview and production dates have changed now here you will see the release dates first half happened on 15th april and 20th april i'll tell you what is preview and what is production second half is scheduled to 28th october usually it is the midnights of friday early hours of saturday so all of these dates are early hours of saturday or midnights of friday october 28th and december 9th next release also you have the dates first half 2023 april 14th and may 19th second half october 13th and november 7th. now earlier these dates were different that's why they said updated okay now what is available in the new features you have to go and see here okay i'll tell you the details you now about the release management in detail i, I just wanted to have a clarification for no. this for success factor that i am <clears throat> using one application where you know similar to success factor but i am working as a end user i am taking care mm -hmm. of hr activities till the onboarding yeah. okay but we have one portal like uh, like zoho you can say or talio kind of Uh, yeah. We have, but I'm using as an end user. So we take care from the starting of the you know application short listing to till the uh, candidate get release from the organization. Yeah. All the yeah. activities um, we do on yes. that portal. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to understand if I'm you are working as a consultant. Okay, so Success Factor is already a design product. Yes. So, if a client required some features, then only we can enable that, right? We means adding and removing that feature. We can, as a consultant, we can do that, right? Hmm. As a consultant, now <clears throat> let me give a simple example. Now, this is the home page. When you log in, this is what I see. Okay. Now, this is a demo system. So, I see all of these things on the home page. This is called the okay. home page or landing page. now your customer when they see this now customer might ask for their requirement i want to have my logo here this is some success factors logo oh okay. they'll ask us to have their own logo okay now they have to give us the logo now where do you want to have your logo on to the left hand side of the screen right hand side of the screen or center of the screen so we can design that now this is into this color now you can see most of the you no know, page in this color now customer might say i don't want this color i want to have red or the combination of red and white so we can have that color now this is the picture the globe now where the global picture now for every customer when they start using the success factors you will see the same picture now customer might ask us for their picture now they can you know, if they are if they give us their own picture we'll be uploading that the background if they want to change we can change that or now success factors is a inbuilt application so everything is there in the system so what will we do as a consultant so we do all of these changes now success factors gives you option to create departments in system now each customer has got their you know, own department some are into manufacturing so they have some departments like hr sales finance and then engineering department or production department now there are some customers who are into banking they may not use all of these departments the production or you no know, sales they may not use these departments they have their own departments now some some calls hr as a human resource system or some call it as hra system or some call it you know some other uh, uh, name so all of these things now i have to go I have to go and create the departments now your customer says i want to have 10 departments finance hr sales you no know, uh, production engineering so i want to have 10 departments so customer will give you those list of department names so you have to go configure a department search for a department and create a department 
customer operates from 10 can 10 different locations so the list of 10 locations should be made available for your customer so that's your duty you have to go create a location now that location should whenever hr tries to hire or hr tries to move the employee in the drop down it should show up so if your customer is operating from 10 different countries and they have different locations in each country in india they operate from bangalore Ch chennai hyderabad and mumbai so when they when they try to move the employee it system should show only those locations which are applicable for that country it should not show all the hundreds of locations which have created for all other countries no it should only show the available or li applicable list of locations or applicable departments now within for all this um, we don't need to do any i mean technical things to do like coding no. and all we have to do coding that. and all success factors we don't have any coding we have only okay. one thing called xmls okay that also you need to have an understanding of the xml language you will not be doing any coding here you have the standard xml files if at all required you have to download them review them if there are any changes you have to make those changes now what changes you have to do how to do those changes i will be telling you we have a sessions on xml i'll make sure at the end of the session all of you will have the enough knowledge now if i ask you to change something in the xml you'll go and change that yeah. very little changes you will be doing in the uh, xml so that's the only thing uh, maybe one percent of complete implementation is your xml now earlier the initial stages now when i started working for success factors i used to do a lot of things in xml but now success factors have migrated most of these things into system now we are not doing through xml we are doing it through front end departments now earlier to create these fields we used to go to xml then create now, some fields are mandatory some fields are optional so we used to make them optional to mandatory or mandatory or optional if there are any custom fields to be created we used to do it in xml now we are not doing anything in the xml we are doing it in the system itself we have option to do that in the system now those are release features each release success factors they are cutting down the dependency of the xmls okay so we'll also discuss on the xmls so all of these things you will be doing as a consultant getting the requirement now we have the op option or we can configure a workflow in the system any number of workflows now workflows are nothing but your approval process the customer says i want to have 10 levels of approvals in transfers yes you can configure it is not user specific it is process specific for transfer let's say i want to have first level it should go to manager second level it should go to manager's manager third level it should go to hr fourth level it should go to some hr vp fifth level i want to it to be going to department head that employs department head or fifth level i want it go to some president or vice president so you can configure all of these things now i want to have 20 levels of approval yes we can configure those 20 levels of approval so some says i don't want to have any approval but whenever something happens in the system i want user to be getting some kind of notification transfer when somebody do it manager can do it manager when when they transfer the user should know that he or she is being transferred so system sends a notification you can just configure a simple cc notification workflow so all of these things you should know what you can do in what we can do in system now when you start interacting with the customer the customer gives you a requirement saying that i want to have this in the system now you should be able to judge whether that is possible in the system or not now some things may not be possible in the system now your customer says i want to have the workflow to be sent to this particular person now you can say that no this this is not the best practice that we follow now general we have these options we can route this to the or oh, this roles or this particular uh, step can be included or excluded or no you can follow this oh no no your customer says no i want to have this no, you try to give some uh, exception how no or how alternate resolution for that 
so as a consultant you should know if that can be done in the system or how it can be done in the system you should know that that will be doing it in the sessions so that's why initial yeah. first four sessions would be completely of theory dev well part you don't have to do anything in the system but these are the things which you should know what you will be doing as a consultant what is implementation partner what is consultant or what is landscape what is release management you should know all of these things before you get into job or suddenly you no know, you get a job and you are asked to do the release document now you should know what what is the release document where should i go and uh, look at the uh, process where should i get the screenshots what are the say uh, what is the landscape of the system so all of these things you should know when you step into the job so first four sessions we i would be covering all the theoretical part and from fifth session onwards slowly we'll move to configuration every day we'll be doing some configurations we start with you no know, configuring these departments companies locations and once we configure all of this we go and see how to hire an employee how to hire bulk employees how to import you no know, if you have hundreds of positions hundreds of departments to be created you cannot do them manually we do we go see how to import the employee data and then you configure the workflows you configure the logics you configure the business tools you configure the system setup system themes how to set up the themes how to set up the logos how to you know create the person ids so all of these things you will be doing in the daily life so the fifth session onwards is completely a practical part you will be given system access which can be you know accessed 24 hours it is just a url and your id and password you log into the system then start doing what we have done in the system so next day when you come you ask me doubts yesterday i tried to do this and i'm getting this error or i was unable to create a department or create a company because we were getting this error or some field was missing or some additional fields are there some mandatory fields are there which we have to key in so you can ask me doubts i'll be giving you all those clarifications and then we move to a different topic so complete 20 or 21 sessions would be a practical part okay we'll be looking at all the real time scenarios now if you know what a customer asks you and how the different scenarios can be built in the system so when hiring the employees some customers ask you to have some fields in some portlets so how do you create those fields or some customer says i want to have you uh, know a person ids to be generated by system and i want to have different ids for different location employees or different company employees yes we can do that how to do that okay so all of these things the real time scenarios we discuss and we do it in the system only first four sessions would be theoretical part sir can we have a uh that is a specialized based uh, training sir what for example if i am into payroll process mm. can i get mm. the training based on that payroll see we have different modules in success factors employee central is the base of the course module so it takes 20 20 25 sessions to learn employee central now we also have time off which takes 15 sessions to learn time off we have compensation module so it takes 12 to 15 days we have performance management it takes an it's no 10 to 12 days we have recruiting module 15 to 20 days or we have onboarding module it takes another 15 to 20 days ecp we have 10 to 15 days so you have different modules with a different time period so every some of them are small modules like compensation and no oh, for oh, the performance management these are small modules now you can learn quickly or huh? if you know success factor system it is easy to learn them employee central since it is the base module so we will be doing a lot of operations here and this is very important to know so everybody you know, performance management guy also should know how to maintain the data so they should have at least some basic knowledge of employee central 
every consultant every module consultant should be have some knowledge in employee central because data comes from employee central and data goes into employee central so you will have module specific consultant when you are assigned with a project you will see two or three ec consultants you will see one or two performance consultant you will see one or two comp consultant one or two learning consultants one or two recruiting consultant so depending on the size of the project you will see all of these consultants so every consultant would be working on only one module at a time is ec has a travel management ec doesn't have any travel management so we don't have anything called travel management here okay yeah go ahead yeah i am uh, into this uh, training and development since one and a half years almost okay and mm -hmm. this uh, sap success factors on this, this particular domain is entirely new to me with the hiring and every other uh, detail which you mentioned here so yeah. uh, is there any other effort which i need to put in because i am not from the hr background i am not even an mba grad i was interested yeah. into hr activities so i joined hr and i yes. was into training and development even now i'm part of uh, training I, i work as a faculty so hmm. this is what which uh, sort of caught my interest so i thought i'll be here so is there any yeah. other effort you want me to put or uh, um, is HR, it a normal one hr uh, no hr process is not a rocket science that you cannot learn okay it is easy you just have to understand the process and which i will be explaining you okay, okay. before configuring anything i'll be explaining you what is to be configured how it is to be configured and how it is going to be used for the employee data okay okay don't worry about that okay thanks man now let's see it, it is a simple process any anybody now if i am no if i am a layman i don't know success factors okay so but i am working for some organizations so i know once i get the offer letter i have to accept the offer letter on the day of joining yes. i have to submit some documents to the hr okay i'll be going to the organization i'll be uh, giving them some scanned copies or no i'll be uh, maybe if we have onboarding you'll be submitting all of those documents okay right. now when when i go to hr hr gives me id saying that now this is your id card where your id is printed so you'll have a number and your data so they will give you your credentials that you can use the success factors application for your ess login so you can go log into the system maybe you will have to fill some data in it so when you go and see all most of your data is already there in the system because hr has updated all of that data so right. you will be given some guidance how to apply a leave or how to put, uh, view your pay slip or how to go and check your salary detail so all of this will be given right. or some somewhere in the share point they they must have created sops and you know they must have placed it so you just have to refer them start using it mm -hmm. uh, you want to transfer get you want to transfer from one location to or you are from bangalore and you are working in hyderabad mm -hmm. so you have requested hr for transfer hr will transfer it so whatever approvals they have they have taken they will transfer you right so every okay. year okay. some performance appraisals are to be conducted and you will have to fill your goals or your manager will review manager will give you appraisals if required or if applicable you will be promoted so how to promote right. your your grade should be changed so these things everybody knows okay because the so one right. way or the other way now either you have you no know, you are working for some organization and all of these are part of no that job or if you are a hr if you are a hr it is your regular duty of most of no success factors is a hr application it mostly used by the hr people and right. employees also uses to their personal use okay. okay so these are known to everyone so maybe the right. terminology is bit different okay you'll get used to that right as it is my first class i don't know about the module sir uh, so as of now i know that you are explaining the employee central module so for employee central module uh, do we he need any prerequisites uh, like uh, no, we don't hcm have, we don't, hcm that's no 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 you don't you don't need anything here 
no prerequisites no, at least you should have okay. a degree or mba okay you don't have to know okay. sap hcm sap hcm is one of the hr product if you are into sap hr okay. you must be knowing the process what sap does but again sf the process is different here okay so you will have only one advantage that you know how to implement for the customers the sap hcm a similar maybe some of them are similar in success factors also or if you are working in oracle fusion or some application of hr okay so you'll at least know the process again that application is different and success factors is different you are maybe you are working in workday workday the screens are different the process is same everybody does the hiring everybody does the transfers everybody does the promotions everybody you process some you know approvals so the screens are different the features are different the options are different here okay okay now if you have knowledge different. into one of these applications that's an added advantage okay now you don't have to be hr not okay. all consultants who are working in success factors are from hr background now if you are from hr background that's an added advantage to you you know how what you do in hiring so generally if i if i'm a hr so i know i will know the hr process what should i do for while hiring the candidate what all documents are to be collected how to transfer the employee how to promote the employee when to promote the employee when to give the promotion for employee whether employee is eligible or not how many years of you no know, employee has completed with the organization well you should know the policies you will you will know the policies if you are a hr Right. Okay. If you don't, yes, thank you. if you are not from a HR background, if you have not from, if you have not no, worked no. on no, HR, HR, yes, yeah. And I am just giving an example. Even if you have, doesn't have any okay. HR experience, or if you are not from a HR, if you have not worked on any of the HR application, then also you can learn success factors. But you need to understand. You need to know the process. Okay. Why do the okay. why why do HRs collect this information? what no where do we store this so why do we store this you should know these things okay thank you i just wanted to know like um, in what way you suggest success factor is better than work day or vice versa yeah uh, so it is oh, every product has got its their own advantages and limitations okay maybe some features which we have in success factors we don't have in workday uh, some features which we have in workday we don't have in success factors uh, one thing i can say that workday doesn't allow you to do customizations much much customizations in the product but success factors has got feasibility the product has got you no know, some options or the feasibility to, it allows you to customize the product or if i have to create my own screen yes you can do that but in workday you know you cannot do that so it is always like you know if i am in success factors people might say that no workday is good because i am using i'll say that product is good but only when you go and work on that product you will come to know what are the limitations the other side of the grass is always green right same thing yes it, it has got its own advantages and own disadvantages same thing in success factors also okay you you cannot do any coding in both the applications you cannot do any coding it's like thumbs up and pepsi what do you want to have want to have pepsi or thumbs up so it's your choice some may like thumbs up some may like pepsi so some say that no pepsi is not good pepsi doesn't taste good so some say that no 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 pepsi uh, pepsi tastes no uh, much better than thumbs up so same uh, the product wise if you see they look same, same but it has got a different taste the same thing with success factors and work day success factors is a sap product uh, that's a, a work day is a oracle product okay thank you okay uh, you can do certifications in success factors you can do success certification is open anybody can just you now subscribe for the certification hub and you can do certification but in work day you should be associated with some implementation partner to do the certification not everybody can go and do the certification okay okay yeah thank you so much 
I hmm. have one question. In case yes, of sir, any sir. job or job opportunity, will they ask for certification? Yes. Success factors. Every aspirant who want to get into success factors, the first thing that your interview ask is whether you have certification or not. Okay. Certification. Every implementation you need certification. I'll tell you in detail. Why do you need certification? What can you do with certification, and what cannot be done uh, without uh, with uh, without certification? Okay. Uh, like for one implementation, you might need certification just for doing, you know, a ten-minute job or thirty-minute job. For that job, you have to have certification. After that, you will not require your certification at all. But without that 30 minutes of work, you will not be able to do the rest of the you know 90% or 95% of the configuration. For that 5% of configuration, which is the start for the implementation, that needs certification, and that is mandatory. Now. If somebody if if somebody asks me if it is a mandatory to have certification, I will say no. Not everybody needs certification in a project. If one or two has got certification, you can ask them to do that activity. You should know what is to be done. Yes, go ahead. Uh, like you said, you will be co covering performance management in this. No. No, I never said that I would be covering performance management. Performance okay. management, it, it takes another 10 to you know, 12 sessions to cover performance okay. management. So, so same in case of LMS also? Like yes, LMS, LMS again, uh, it, it takes 15 to 16 sessions. Okay. Now, if you want to have a list of uh, you know, performance management or compensation or recruiting, I can give you, uh, you know, some knowledge in it. How right. now see once you have the knowledge of success factors, once you know how to configure the system, you can you know, start implementing or start learning the uh, implementations. Okay, yeah. success yeah. factors at least it is easy than any other yeah. application. I was in SAP, so SAP uh, it is very difficult compared to success factors. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what model we are going to cover in these sessions? It is purely employee central, core employee central. So okay. I have the uh, content as well, what we will be covering in next mm -hmm. 20, 25 days. This is compensation and this is easy. So all of these things will be covering in next 20, 25, 25 days. Okay. It will be given any, one month. More than that, is yes. there any chance? See, you have a lot in the system. But okay. as a beginner, this is what you need. From here, it is on. It is your interest. What do you want to learn? You can explore the system and you know, learn a lot. Now, there is a lot in Employee Central. Now, because every customer's requirement is different. Some some may use transfer. Some may some may not use transfer. Some says we don't we don't have the policy of transferring employees. We have only one location. Everybody has to work from here. So there is no question of you no know, having the transfer event con configuring the transfer event for them. Okay. Some may say that we don't use suspensions. We don't we no we don't suspend our employees. We you know, we have the flexibility of employees to work from anywhere, or you know, we give them chance to you know, work differently. So we don't suspend the employees. So there is no point, or there is no uh, we don't have to configure suspension for them. So every customer's requirement is different. Some may say that you know, whenever user does this, I want system to throw an error or give some warning message or give you know, give some pop up message saying that you cannot do this or you can only do this or. You know, some messages to be popped up. Yes, we can configure, we can customize the product. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have one question I just wanted to ask. Uh, hmm. 
I walk. I I am walking as a ABAP HR, okay, and uh, I have also some knowledge in basic PA and some payroll module of uh, SAP HCM, okay. So yes. Uh, it, so suppose if I learn a uh, success factor, so it will get a uh, increase the chances of like uh, job opportunities. Yes, definitely. Success factors in the cloud computing. And in, in coming days, you will see all the products moving to cloud. Yeah, okay. actually, so basically, why, what? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I just saw some success factor standard templates where SAP is moving from SAP to success factors. So yes. that's what I see as that. So that's why I register here. Ki I will get some knowledge about a success factor and all. So. Uh, yes. Like this is a like a, I am going on a right path. Yes, so, definitely, hundred percent here. Hundred with one day you'll definitely have to. If not today, maybe after six months or one year, you'll have to move to, you know, the cloud computing application. Since you are into SAP already into SAP, so success factors is one of your option. Okay, because I worked as a techno functional. Yes. Since you know uh, you are into you know, ABAP and you are doing the techno functional job, so you know the process, you know uh, the flow of uh, HR. Yeah, so yeah, and it and would be easy for you. Yes, yeah, it would be for easy I'm, for you. Yeah, for PA and OM process, I am aware about it, and payroll process, I am aware about it, and uh, I worked on ECP module, success yeah. factor okay. back end. So I didn't get a chance yeah. to work on front end. So here in uh, success factors, we don't have back end and front end in SAP. The difference is in SAP, you have front end and back end. Front end is called ESS or MSS. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. They will have to log in as an employee. Whereas in the back end, the consultants or the HR operations logs in and does the hiring or does the personal actions there. But here you don't have anything called uh, front end and back end or ESS or MSS depending on the role that you have you will see the number of options if I am a consultant I, I have option to create a department I have option to create the templates I have to option to enable the fields or disable the fields if I am an employee when I log in I will not see all of these things I will not be able to create department or I will not be able to you know, design the template I have option to only look at my data or edit my personal data to some extent, or I can view others' personal information. Thank you. Actually, that is a I I just uh, told you as a backend is a payroll that mm. uh, we have. Uh, yeah. We using a P two P. It's a configured ECN payroll. That's what I told. You. Yes. Yes. Uh, actually, actually, uh, I have one doubt is recording integration actually. Yeah, integration yeah. is completely different. So you'll have different consultants yeah. for the integration. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, again, mm -hmm. the tool what your customer is using, depending on the tool that your customer is using, it could be Dell Boomi, it could be HANA Cloud mm -hmm. integration, or it could be PI, or it could be any other integration. Mm -hmm. So no, every, right. no, again, every tool is different. Yeah, every tool, yeah, mm -hmm. every tool is different again. So mm -hmm. if you have to learn some integration, then again, what tool you want to use? Mm -hmm. What tool you want to learn? If you want to learn only Dell Boomi, so you have to learn mm -hmm. Dell Boomi. Not, again, not every customer uses Dell Boomi for their interface. They use some other application. OK. okay. Uh, so I, I thought there's an integration part happening. We will map in SAP in success factor 2, actually. No, success factors, we don't do any mapping uh, in the uh, system mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. have integration center you know, where you can see the mapping of yeah, uh, the technical names of the fields what we use and then those things are to okay. be mapped with the uh, sap because you have to have the tables of the third party application as well okay fine Okay, so we'll stop it here for today and we'll continue uh, tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much.
okay thank you okay so this is the first session right yeah so since you are yeah since you are new to the consulting we'll see what are the terms that we use or what is the process of the configuration or implementing success factors to the customer okay so basically in success factors we have two types of products one is called implementation and second is called the support these are the two types of projects that we have now implementation means we have to start interacting with the customer get the requirements from customer and configure the system as per customer's requirement okay so that's implementation okay and the second part is the support process so there are customers or each and every customer who has got success factors implemented for them needs a support consultant working with them okay so we will be supporting the customers who has already got success factors now in the support will look after the incident management now incident management means a ticketing system like whatever doubts or whatever analysis or whatever issues that customer raises we have to fix them okay so customers would be creating incidents or incidents or tickets so those tickets will be resolved second is change management now when they when the implementation was done maybe few things were implemented for customer a customer might want to have some more changes in the system or some more configurations to be made in the system so those changes will also be taken care by support team and third we have release management we'll talk about release management in the coming session okay so we also do the release management so every six months success factors upgrades their product and whenever this release happens whenever this update happens we should also understand what are the new features that have come in the release and we need to explain the customer or we need to educate the customer about the changes in the system. so that's release implementation means the base system or the system is to be configured or we have to do the configuration from scratch is this clear implementation and support these are types of projects okay now here we have seen the terms consultant customer implementation Now, who are consultants? Consultants are those people who configures the system or who implements the success factor system to customer. Now, who is customer? Customer is end user. Now, we are consultants. We'll be working for the customer, the end user, who is going to use the system. Implementation partner, the authorized organizations who are or who are otherwise to implement success factor system to customer now consultants will be working for implementation partner implementation partner examples will be your ibm wipro infosys etc so these are all implementation partners okay now consultants would be working for implementation partners will be working for implementation partner now these customers are projects for implementation partner. got it any doubts here yeah i just wanted to you know like uh, we as a consultant working for implementation as well as support right yes and uh, now, this say your, management... yes Uh, uh, this release management, uh, what you told, is like uh, the SAP will be updating uh, some success factor on a regular intervals. 
So once yeah. we hand over the project to the client, these uh, updates that are being done by SAP, are we supposed to do that in the customer system or they will be doing no. it? No. Success factors. Now, success factors is a global product. We have thousands of customers across the globe. And the release doesn't happen for each customer. It is per application. Now, the application gets updated. We don't do it for the customer. The entire success factors application is updated. So it is now let me give you an example okay so let's take an example of a whatsapp application okay everybody uses whatsapp you have whatsapp application in your mobile and i have whatsapp application in my mobile okay now when the upgrades happen it happens for every user yes or no yeah it's a global product so when mm -hmm. the upgrade happens it happens for everyone not to the individual now some features maybe sometimes you have an option to whether to upgrade it or not that's a different one again but when the upgrade happens the system prompts you that you have an upgrade and it gets upgraded okay the same thing success factors also gets updated now we have again we have a fixed timelines for these updates so every six months on a particular day it gets updated for all the customers across the globe okay yeah now let's say you are a consultant working for ibm and for ibm coke is the project coke is a end user okay so it can be an implementation project or it can be a support project. Again, the implementation and support, it is not required or it is not mandatory that every, every implementation partner who have implemented for that customer has to support. No. The support can be done by a different partner. Now, let's say for IBM, Coke and HSBC are two projects. Okay. Coke is implemented by Deloitte and okay. IBM is supporting. HSBC implementation is done by IBM mm -hmm. and support is also done by IBM. That means now implementation partner can have either support projects or implementation. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Now we as a consultant, depending on the need of the partner. Now, if you are working for IBM, today we have a support project. Okay, they can place it, they can put you in support project, maybe for six months or one year or two years. It depends on the project. After six months, uh, you have a requirement of, IBM has a requirement of you know, implementation. And they can pull you into implementation from support okay okay so it all depends upon the need of the partner okay. okay yeah so that's the implementation and support the type of products mm -hmm. second is the landscape what do you understand by terms landscape? Do you know what is the landscape? Uh, I guess it is how the system uh, will appear on the screen of the uh, client. Like what all the features they want, how it is supposed to look no. when they log in. No, no. So the landscape of the system means the arrangement of systems in a sequence of implementation. Now, there are multiple systems that we will be working on. For one implementation, we'll be working on multiple systems. 
okay these multiple systems are configured in at different times and the arrangement of these systems in a sequence of implementation is called system landscape for example success factors or sap recommends every customer to have minimum of three systems development quality and production so every customer across the globe will have three types of systems development quality and production these are the minimum systems any customer will have okay now sometimes you, you may also see more than these three systems like pre production or test system or projects you can name name them any mm -hmm. minimum is 3 maximum can be any it comes with a package now these three systems it comes with a package so when you subscribe for success factors success sap gives you these three systems development quality and production if your customer want to have additional systems like pre production or projects or test system then customer has to pay for it customer has to pay additional amount for these systems okay now always we follow this way dev quality and production we follow this sequence development quality and production now when you get the requirement from customer a customer says i want to use the actions called hire transfer promotion and termination okay now in system we have around 20 plus standard events or actions now these each of these is called an event or action we have around 20 plus events in the system but one of the customer says i i only want to have these four events we have data change we have position changes we have uh, no uh, global assignments we have paid leave we have unpaid leave so we have around 20 plus standard events available in the system but your customer said i want to have only these four actions so you need to configure this in the development system first go develop it in development system configure it in development system and you do the testing whether the events that you have enabled are showing up in the content or not so you have to test it and that testing is called unit testing we call it unit testing where the consultant tests the configuration now i have enabled four actions hire transfer promotion and termination now these four actions are to be tested okay so that is called unit testing now once you feel that the testing once you feel that the configuration is okay you will be moving this configurations to quality system this is the second system where the end users are going to test your customer will test it whether the process is running correctly or not for transfer you need to have two levels of approval for promotion you need three levels of approval and for termination you need to have four levels of approval so your customer will be telling testing the entire process they'll initiate a transfer for some test employees and see whether the two levels of approval are triggering correctly or not they'll initiate promotion they'll initiate termination so if they have any changes now after testing this part they realize that they need some more changes to be done maybe they want to have data changes event also okay now any change that 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 is 
required by customer again you have to do it in development you have to test it and move it to quality again there will be testing in quality and this testing once the testing is completed they will be giving you the sign off and this sign off is called uat user acceptance testing they'll be doing testing called user acceptance testing users has to test and confirm that the process what they have requested is configured in the system correctly then we move the configuration to product then we move the configuration to production okay so this is the process that we follow for any customer request development quality and production now these systems may be called differently by different customers so quality they can call it as test production they can call it as prod or something else but the basic terms that we use is dev quality and production clear uh, here the term production uh, does it mean like uh, the customer will start using the system yes exactly okay. production is a system where every end user logs in now development only in development only consultant logs in development is used by consultants quality or test system is used by both consultants and some end users not all end users some end users who are responsible for testing the product maybe few from hr and few from it they would be testing it and the production system all the end users will be logging in each and every end user you have 5000 end users all the 5,000 end users will be logging in production system. Now, consultants will also log into production system. Just to see if there are any changes or if there are any issues to be fixed. Okay. So, you told like after development testing will be done, which is called unit testing. So is this testing and the landscape testing, which the customer need to pay separately. Mm -hmm. So is this same or it is different? No. Development, the testing, what we do as a consultant, that is called unit testing. Now, whether mm -hmm. your configuration is working fine or not. Now, before moving it to customer, you have to test it whether the changes what you have done in the system are working fine or not. Okay. Right. So, customer said, I want to have this field in personal information. You have created mm -hmm. that field. And you will not mm -hmm. ask customer to test it no, directly. You will you will have to test it first, whether mm -hmm. it is showing up or not. Okay. Now, customer will test in different ways. The customer will mm -hmm. test, no, positive, will do the positive testing, will do the negative testing. Now, it's a, a simple example. A customer has asked us to create a field in personal information okay you have configured you have added a new field in the personal information now this field is mandatory field that means users has to enter some value mandatory and this should allow 100 characters okay so now customer will test here whether this field is mandatory or not. Can you save the record without having value in this field? Can we enter more than 100 characters? Now can we enter text in it? Okay. So what all, what all values can you input in this? So all this testing will be done by your end users. Okay. Okay. Now, if there are any changes, now initially they said 100 characters. 
because with some in some cases they want to have 150 characters so they want to increase the length to 150 so this is the change again you have to do it in development and then you know, move it to quality system okay. any change that is requested by your customer first it is to be done in development and then move to quality from testing once you get sign off you will move it to production in production you will not be testing anything production you will have all real time data mm -hmm. you will not be testing anything in production system okay and once the project moves to production and then a new request comes from the client then the same process will be done development same process will be followed. development quality and production without testing anything you will not move it to production mm -hmm. okay okay yeah that's the process that, that we follow so any implementation or any project that you start working on you need to find out the landscape of the process some customers will use only three instances three systems some customer uses four some customers uses five some customer uses six okay yeah And this is system landscape. The third topic is types of systems. Success factors, we have two types of systems. First one is called provisioning. And second is called instance. First is called provisioning and second one is called instance provisioning only certified consultants locks into provisioning only certified consultants locks into provisioning instance all the consultants and end user slots in. Now, each of these systems, what we have discussed here, development will have development provisioning and development instance. Quality will have quality provisioning and quality instance. Production will have call production provisioning and production instance. So the certified consultants logs into provisioning first and enable all the features that are required for the customer. We only enable the features in provisioning. And then once these features are enabled, you will see all the configuration configurable screens in instance. Now both of them are interlinked. The provisioning and the instances, these are interlinked. Whatever changes that you do in provisioning, you will see the change in the instance as well. Now, success factors has got a lot of modules. Employee Central, Compensation, PMGM, Learning Management, okay, then you have Succession, Recruiting, Onboarding, etc. So these are the modules of success. Now, if any of these modules are to be implemented. First, you need to enable these modules in provisioning. And again, for each module, you have different features. Within Employee Central, you have time off, you have global assignment, you have position management, you have absences, we have attendances, we have languages. So all of these are to be enabled in provisioning first. Now, global assignment or concurrent employment, these are only required for some customers global assignment is a feature you know, which is used by the customer who has got their operations in different countries now if you if, a, if your customer has got their operations in different countries and the employees of that customer are moved between the countries then we use global assignment 
So if your customer has got their operations in only one country, we don't need global assignment feature. So you don't have to enable that in provisioning. So first, all the modules and the module specific features are to be enabled in provisioning. Then you go and do the configuration in instance. To log into provisioning, only the certified consultants will have access. Only the certified consultants can log into the system. If you are not certified, you will not be able to log into provisioning. Instance, anybody can log in. Now here certification is not required. Even if you are certified or not, you can, if you have the ID password or your credentials, you can log into the system. Here you don't need any certification. Clear? Yeah. Okay, so that is why Certification is very important in success factors. So every aspirant who want to get into success factors has to get certified in at least one module. The first thing that is asked in your interviews are whether you are certified or not. Because Without certification, you will not be able to implement success factors for any customer. Now, the first and foremost thing that we do for any implementation is setting up the features in provisioning. First, the features are to be set up in provisioning. Then, you have to do the configuration in instance. And to configure or to, or to enable the features in provisioning, you need to have certification. So if you have three systems, dev, quality, and production, you'll have dev provisioning and dev instance, quality provisioning and quality instance, production provisioning and production instance. So every system you have to first do the configuration in provisioning and then in instance. Clear? Yeah. Okay. And that's your types of systems. Now, roles and responsibilities of a consultant. Roles and responsibilities of a success factors consultant. So earlier in SAP, we used to have different roles, like a functional consultant, a technical consultant, functional consultant who configures the system, technical consultant who develops the system or who customizes the system, GRC or the security consultant who looks after the permissioning part, basis consultant who set up the system, workflow consultant who looks after the approvals part. So we used to have these many roles in SAP, but now in success factors, we only have one role. We don't have multiple roles. We have only one role called consultant who will be configuring the system, customizing the system, looking after or setting up the system. Okay, permissioning and even the setup. So all of, even the approvals, all of these are done by a consultant. We don't have a technical consultant, functional consultant. We don't do any coding here. So all of the activities are to be done by the consultant. Configuring, customizing, testing, and production. All of these are done by consultant. Okay, so if it is an implementation project, then you need to get the scope of the project from customer 
the implementation con the implementation requirements are to be requested from customer so you need to find out what your customer is looking for okay so that's your job once you get the requirement you have to configure that in the system you have to test it move it to quality ask your customer to test it and once you get the sign off you move all of this configuration to production system and you prepare the documents how to use the system okay you need to prepare the sops standard operating procedures how to hire an employee how to navigate to hire an employee how to maintain employee data how to transfer an employee how to promote an employee so all of these things you will have to prepare and share it with your customer okay yeah yeah so right from collecting the information till the production everything is uh, considered as a consultant responsibility yeah it is the responsibility of the customer uh, it is responsibility of the consultant to get all the requirements from customer and implement those changes in the system okay okay now yeah. sharing the requirements sharing the requirements has to be done by your customer but before sharing the information customer should know how to handle the system or how to use the system or what all do we have in the system so you need to explain when you start interacting with your customer you will be giving a demo of success factors how to log into the system what all we do in system what data is maintained okay how do we maintain this data so all of these are to be explained so what we have in system and what is your customer requirement or what is your customers requirement that is to be configured in system customer gives you all their requirements right in personal information we have fields like first name middle name last name etc gender salutation etc so these are all the fields and where customer says now you have to show them these are the fields that we have the first name is a mandatory field last name is a mandatory field in standard system okay and your customer says i don't want last name to be mandatory because some for some of the employees we only have first name and we don't have last so this is the change that we have to do so you have to remove this mandatory one you have to remove the option of mandatory and make it optional now you also want to have your customer also want to have one more field called initials so this is to be configured now uh, this change is to be done in the system this change is to be done in the system this change is to be done in the system now this is make the field optional create a new field okay and in salutation generally you have values mr ms mrs okay so these are the values that you have in salutation field it's a drop down field you just go select the value and your customer said i want to have another value called master value or doctor Now this is the change that we have to do. What is that? Add a new value to the existing values. 
Okay, so these are the changes that we have to do in system. This is given by your customer. Now, when you make these changes, you have to do unit testing. You have made this field optional. First, you go try to maintain some data, save the record. If it is allowing without value in last name, yes, that's fine. If it is not allowing, that means it is a mandatory field. Go to sanitation field in the drop down, see whether the new value doctor is showing up or not. So do personal information and see whether you have, whether you can see initials field. Initials editable field, whether users are able to maintain data in initials or not. That you test in unit testing. Move it to quality, ask your customer to do all these changes. Once they confirm, these changes are to be moved to production. Clear? Yeah. So these are the roles and responsibilities of a consumer. Now this is the configuration that we have to do. Okay. Apart from this, we also have permissioning. What all can be done by an employee? What all can be done by a manager? What all can be done by a HR? So all of these are to be permission. When I log into system as an employee, I should be able to look at my personal information, edit my personal information, but can only see my compensation information. When manager logs in, manager should be able to edit their direct report data as well. When HR logs in, HR should be able to edit all the information for all the employees. So these permissions are to be controlled. Any approvals that are required, when user makes some changes in the system, system should trigger a workflow or approval. You configure a workflow. So all of these changes are to be done in the implementation by the implementation consultant. And if you are working on a support project, then you need to look after the incidents or the tickets created by your customer let's say they are stuck up with some hiring they are unable to proceed the hiring they are unable to do a hiring in the system so what is causing the issue they'll create a ticket then as a support consultant you have to go analyze and fix the issue why they are unable to hire an employee so analyze find out the root cause and fix the issue that's incident management. And if they request for any changes in any change in the system, so those changes are to be implemented. And also on the release management, you will be working on the release. Okay, so that's the roles and responsibilities of a success factors consultant. So when you look at any job postings, Okay, of success factors in portals like Nautri or Monster. Okay, there you will see all of these activities. Should know end to end implementation. What is end to end implementation? Starting from gathering the requirements to deployment of the changes to production system. So, whatever we do in between these two stages, so we should, we should have done or we should have experience in these areas okay so be it a support role or a implementation role so you'll see the list of activities that you will be doing for your customers any doubts here uh, no nothing at all now Nothing else, no. So we'll stop it here for today because this is the first day. I think uh, this would be too much. We have discussed about types of project system, landscape types of systems, and roles and responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We'll stop um, it here for today and we'll continue tomorrow with some other topics. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, 
can you show me the screen with all the standard fields that SAP provides so that I will have an idea how SAP system looks like? Now, as an end user, you will not know whether it is a standard field or a custom, custom field. Mm -hmm. When you go and look at the employee profile, you'll see all the fields that are available in each section or each booklet. Mm -hmm. You see here, I've opened one of the employees. Now, this is whatever that you see here. Personal information is a standard booklet with all these fields. Mm -hmm. Okay, national ID, biographical information, these are the standard fields. This, now, you will also find, uh, now, if you want to have age or any custom field in biographical information or any portrait, you can add. Mm -hmm. So, all of these are standard fields. You go to job information. You find all standard fields. These are all standard fields. You want to configure, you want to add a custom field? Yes, you can add. Okay. So whatever custom fields we add, it will be visible on the screen once we do the implementation. Yes. When you add a custom field, you should ask your customer who should see this field, who should edit this field, who should delete this, who should have access to delete this field. Maybe your customer might need a field which is only a viewable for employee, editable for HR, mm -hmm. and can be deleted only by consent. So you can configure that. Okay. And uh, also we can uh, customize these uh, the topics that I've mentioned, like live event uh, compensation yes. payroll now, all of these, add... yeah, anything yeah anything that you see you can add you can move them to a different place you can move this now these are these are called sections okay. and each section has got subsection these are all subsections mm -hmm. uh, about me is a section which has got subsections of personal information id information and so on now id information is a subsection if i go to id information i see for this subsection, we have two portlets. These are called portlets or okay. blocks. Okay. We call them blocks or portlets. So we have two blocks. National mm -hmm. ID information, work permit. Biographical information is a is a subsection which has got only one block or one portlet called biographical information. Now some have two blocks and some have only one block. Mm -hmm. So these things can be Change. Now, if you want this contact information to be moved to some other section. Now, somebody has moved compensation statement to other section. See here. Mm -hmm. This yeah. belongs to this belongs to compensation somewhere here. It should be here. Mm -hmm. Now, you also mm -hmm. have it here. You see here, you also have it here. And it is mm -hmm. also showing up in the address also. Mm -hmm. So we can just move it back to the compensation. Yes. Uh, now you okay. yes, you can add fields, you can add portlets, you can move the portlets, you can move the sections, you can move subsections. Okay. You can rename this text now. It says about me. Now mm -hmm. I want to call it as personal information. Yes, you can change this. Okay. What fields you want to show, what sections you want to show, what portlets you want to enable, all of this can be done. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll stop it here. We'll continue tomorrow. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Okay. So yesterday we discussed about the types of systems and uh, who can log into provisioning and who can log into instance. And it is clear that if you want to do implementation as a consultant, you should be, uh, you should have the valid certification. 
okay only if you have a valid certification you will be able to log into provisioning and do the implementation so that means certification is mandatory for success factors okay so how to do the certification of success factors so success factors has got different because it has got different modules we also have certification for each module so these are some of the modules so you have certification for each of this module and for employee central certification code is thr81 this thr81 okay now if you want to do certification then you need to log into training.sap.com this is an official website of sap from where you can do your certification okay sap certification just click on view sap certifications I see these are all SAP certifications and the one what we have to do is THR 81. Let me change my country here. Maybe because I am certified in employee central, it is not showing up. THR 81. So here, THR 81, Success Factors Employee Central Academy. THR 81 is Success Factors Employee Central Core Academy. Okay, now this course contains or the certification contains total of 80 questions. And all of these questions are of multiple choice. All the 80 questions are of multiple choice. Now some of these questions contains multiple answers. Okay. So the, out of this 80 questions, some questions you'll get, you'll, you'll see that there are two or three answers and you need to answer all those answers correctly. If a particular question has got three answers, then you need to answer all of those three correctly. There are no negative marks and the duration for this certification is certification examination is three years. Okay. And the pass percentage yeah. is multiple questions in the sense we need to select only one option more no? it will allow us to select three options also if the two yeah. answers are correct wherever, or three answers are correct also yes. wherever, wherever you have single answer you will see radio buttons okay okay and wherever you have multiple answers now they will also specify that this question contains two answers or this question contains three answers they'll specify that there you have check boxes. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. So if you see radio buttons, then it is only one answer. You can only select one. If you select yeah. A and if you want to select B, then if you when you select B, 
So A will be deselected. Okay. But if it is checkbox, the consequent will change. Yes, answer will change to from A to B. Whereas if you have multiple answers, then you'll have you'll find the check boxes there instead of radio buttons. You can select multiple options there. Okay. Okay. To show you if it is available. If three answers are correct for one question, we'll be getting marks only if we correct uh, if we answer all the three uh, options. All the three correctly. Yeah. Okay. Let's say for you'll have multiple choice of A, B, C, D, and E, and you need to select three answers correctly. Let's say A, B, C is the correct answer. So if you have selected A, B, D, then you will not get score for this question. Then no so you, we won't get even, even a half mark like that also you won't get yeah, it. No, you three answers get should be correct only yeah three answers should be correct okay should show up actually thr it even here i'm not sure why it is i'm sure you are. It should be somewhere here only. THR ID will also. Is there any website where we can uh, see the sample question paper? Yeah, sample also you'll get to get to see. Let's say uh, this one. If I go here, I'll take some other module. Okay, so this is onboarding. Click view details. I see here you have sample questions here examination contains 80 questions a cutoff score for onboarding it is 66 percentage I think for uh, EC it is 62 percentage you need to get 57 answers correctly 57 or 62 percentage cutoff score for EC okay for onboarding it is 66 percentage cutoff score I think it is 57. Let me see. It's been a long time that I've done my certification. 62, I think. Yeah, 62. 62 is a cutoff cut score for Employee Central. Uh, in certification, you have two options. One is CER 006, okay, which costs you 42,277 INR. This is Indian rupees. And then second option is CER 001. Here you have 16,009 level. Okay, here you will get only one attempt, and here you get six attempts. You get here six attempts okay. now six attempts means you can use these six attempts to do certification in different modules if you have cleared your certification in the first attempt you can use the other five attempts for other modules if you have failed to clear your employee central certification in the first attempt you can use your second attempt again if you fail in the second attempt you can also use third attempt so for one module you can use maximum of three attempts whereas CER 001 you'll only get one attempt if you don't clear your certification in first attempt then this will uh, now again you have to subscribe for with another CER 001 here David, there will be any gap duration between one certification and the second certification in the sense no, you are telling you can, that if you are you can do it immediately Not faster for the first attempt uh, you can go for the second attempt you are saying no there should be any gap like that no you can also uh, do do that immediately if the slots are available you can uh, take it up immediately generally what we do is we we will be booking this slot so whenever you want to write or whenever you want to do your certification let's say tomorrow you want to do your certification 
you need to see the available slots you can take your certification from home itself all that you need is a uh, proper internet with webcam you should have webcam and you should connect to your headsets okay, okay. because a proctor will be watching uh, you throughout your examination three years your proctor would be watching you so you should switch on your webcam proctor will take control proctor will see you know, if there are any applications or background applications that are running okay in fact it doesn't allow you to open the examination dashboard if you uh, open any uh, other applications like you cannot open word or you know, chrome or internet explorer or excel or powerpoints or you know, snipping tools you 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 will not be able to open any of these application when you uh, when the examination starts so you have to close all these applications then only your you know you'll be routed to certification dashboard once okay. you start your certification examination then a proctor will take control will see will they will ask you to show the surroundings of your place you should not be keeping any mobiles or papers or you know, books with you so they will uh, they'll be watching you throughout the examination Okay. Okay. Here is yeah. C T H R eighty one. This is employee center. Now let's see the sample questions. Just click on view more. Is there any option where we can uh, book a slot for three attempts only, as we can uh, give exam for one particular module only three times? Hmm. So but first, let's say you have booked for your employee central examination tomorrow. So immediately after completing the certification, you'll get this score. Okay. And mm -hmm. at the end, you'll see whether you're passed or failed. Okay. You the result here? will be immediately once after completing the submit button. Yeah, only we immediately. Can do yeah. Immediately once you once you complete this, then you'll uh, once you submit, you'll get your score. You see your what role based permission steps no this is your voting there are two correct answers here which i want to select okay. these two i'll just show you three correct answers oh okay three correct answers ah, radio button three, one this is radio button two correct answers I'm just randomly selecting okay three correct answers Two correct answers. Two correct answers. Two correct. Here you have more of this. Okay. Now all, all of the ten questions are completed. Ten of ten. The time remaining is thirteen minutes. Okay. When you click on submit, you'll get your score immediately. It says whether you are passed or failed. Total score two. Out of Total 10. score is two. This is your sample. Okay. Okay. So here, if you see the version, what you what it says is two H twenty twenty one. Okay. Now two H twenty twenty one means it is the latest version of certification that you have. Two H is second half of twenty twenty one. We have not discussed about release management, right? We'll discuss about release management here. Now the version what you see here it says 2H 2021. Okay. So in next one week or 10 days, this will change to 1H2022. I'll tell you what are, what are these 2H2021 and 1H2022. Okay? Yeah. Clear on certification? Any doubts? Yes. No. Okay. So let me refresh this once. 
they are changing the pattern here. Yeah, that's why person to the option. Okay. Now <clears throat> let's talk about the release management. Now, success factors upgrades their product every six months. So earlier, success factors was upgrading the product once you know quarterly once. Now it is updating half yearly ones. Okay, that means every year they will be updating the product twice. Okay, and these are called 1H and 2H. 1H is first half and 2H is second half. So this year 1H, you will see it has 1H 2022, which has happened recently in the month of May. And 2H, it is expected in October. So every year in the month of April, May, and October, November, the release happens. Now, this release contains three types of features. One is universal features, admin opt-ins, and provisioning opt-ins. Okay. So the release contains universal features, admin opt-ins, and provisioning opt-ins. Universal feature main feature which are applicable for all the customers across the globe. You don't have to do anything. Once the application gets updated, you'll get you'll see the new functionalities. You'll see those new features. For admin opt-ins. Every customer will have option whether to use that feature or not. That means if you want to enable or if you want to use this feature, you need to do some configuration. Here, universal features, you will not be able to do any configuration. So this by default system gets updated with the universal features. For admin opt-ins, you have to do some configurations to use that feature. And these two are in instance. And provisioning opt-ins, same as your admin opt-in, if you want to use this functionality, you need to enable it in the provisioning. So every release, you will see these features, universal admin opt-ins and provisioning opt-ins. So once the release happens, you have to log into system and see what are the changes that have come in that release. Now, how do you know what release features we have and whether those features are applicable to your customer or not. So all of this information, you will find it in a portal called community.successfactors.com. So let me copy this here for certification. This is your certification and for release, you get all the information about the release management in community.successfactors.com. Okay, so you go to products, release updates, roadmap, and patches. You click on release updates, roadmap, and patches. You scroll down, you see the release dates here release, review, and production. First half 2022, the release happened in preview in 15th on 15th April and in production it happened in May 20. So what is this preview and what is the production? Now we talked about the instances or the system that we have development quality in production, pre-production test and projects. So these are the types of systems that we have or types of the system landscape that we have. Okay. Now these systems will be split into two servers now let's say your customer is having development quality and production development quality and production system now these systems will be routing to one of the servers and these servers are called data centers
the database is get stored in the data centers it gets stored in the data centers now each region we have different data centers for us we have one data center for uk we have a different data center for india for asian countries we have a different data center for australia new zealand you have a different data centers so these data centers are named as dc4 dc8 dc10 dc12 dc11 dc2 and so on this is data center again each region or dc4 is specific to us dc4 is data center 4 is specific to us dc8 is specific to uk now data center 4 is again split into two parts one is called preview and second is called production all the data centers are split into two review and production okay so dc4 also you see dc4 preview dc4 production dc8 you see dc8 preview dc8 production dc10 you see dc10 preview and dc10 production now why these data centers are split into preview and production is because of the release management only because of the release management the data centers are split into preview and production all the customers instances or all the customers systems now if your customer is using these three systems development quality and production one of it now production will always be in production data center this is for that now this is common every customer's production system or production instance will be in production data center in the respective data center if you are working for a us customer then their data center will be dc4 the production data center you will see production system quality will be in preview quality will be in preview data center and development will be in broad data center if you have another system called pre-production then it can be in preview or it can be in production so at least one system now production will always be in production data center and out of these two systems one of it should be in preview and one should be in production now this can be in preview this can be in production or this can be in preview and this can be in production minimum of one system should be in preview other than production you forget about production production will always be in production data center other than the production the rest of the systems one should be in preview minimum one should be in preview and one should be in production if you have three then two can be in preview one can be in production or two can be in production one can be in preview so it all depends upon your customer's choice so why do they split this instances or systems into preview and production data center because when the release happens the when the release happens success factors upgrade the success, upgrade the application in the data center now they will update the preview data center first always they update the preview data center now all the customers who are in this preview data center will see those changes now the quality system when you log into quality you will see it as 1h2022 after one month you will have actually one month time one month or one month plus five or six days time to move these changes to production so in this one month you have to log into quality or whichever previous system you need to log in and see what are the new features that have come in okay you test it if you find if you found any issues with the new release features you move you you create a ticket with sap and ask sap to stop it moving to production system so they will not be doing the release directly into the production so it is always review now that's why if you see here you see the first half of 2022 you see preview and production so preview happened on 15th of april and after one month one month five days 
you see it happened on May 20th in production systems. The next release which is expected is on October 14th in preview and November 18th in production. So it always happens in the midnights of Fridays. Now 15th April is Friday. You see here. 15th April is a Friday. Similarly, May 20th. May 20th is a Friday. Friday midnight, the system gets updated. Again, the next release is going to happen on 14th October. So for After every update only, and all, they are doing the testing, like testing part. Then only the if it is a well and go, or then only they are moving into the production. That's what no. no use now usually all the all the release features what comes in are again are tested by sap but now since they cannot test all these scenarios now okay. for, as a as a as a consultant you need to test for your customer if, whether okay. because of this new release features if there is any impact on the existing process so every customer follows a different process right yeah so whenever the release happens you have to test the entire application whether all the functionalities are working fine or not or you need to you need to test the new release features as well whether those features are working for your customer properly or not very rare cases you'll find some some bugs you'll escalate it to sap and sap Will so if required, they will stop moving uh, the new features to production system. Or if they can fix it immediately, they'll fix that. Or if it is the issue in our understanding, they'll explain you saying that now this the purpose of this feature is so and so. You need to configure this, or you no, know, you need to do this to see this change. Okay yeah you told that the data center is country specific like there is gc4 for us then dc8 for some other country so this release that happens uh, by sap is it country specific uh, that's why these data centers are uh, assigned or there is some other reason for uh, assigning these data centers yeah it is country specific because this data centers are country specific now this is us now when i say us data center okay now the current time of us is 8 8 pm or 10 pm in us now okay for us it is 9 30 morning 9 30 9 36 this is okay. indian time but if you look at us time it is now midnight for them it is midnight or night of 13th right okay okay so yeah release should happen on the friday nights of their location okay okay so all mm -hmm. the us us customers now dc4 let's say this is four is a us data center now you have here client one or customer one client or customer client two and so on so you have here let's say 10 customers okay so this customer has got dev quality and production this customer has got dev so all of them have got so minimum of these things and this one has got pre prod also and this customer has got test system the customer has got pre-prod and test. Okay, this customer has got projects. This customer has got pre-prod and projects. So each customer will have their own requirement. Okay, let's say these are the now. This is your you can say this is your production data center. 
So some customer, this will be generally preview or and this is your product. Some customers, what they do is they'll have QA here, dev here, QA here, dev here. And this one is also prod data center. And this is preview data center. Is this clear now? Yeah. Okay. Now, depending on the customer, you will see that some customers will only have three. The minimum is three systems dev quality and production. Maximum can be any number. Now, you see, this customer has got a total of five systems. Out of five systems, this is in production, this is in preview, this is in production, this is in production, this is in preview. That means preview they have two. This is preview, this is preview. They have two in preview and three in production. Now on 15th of April when you log in, for this customer when you log in to quality on 15th, you'll see the latest version of 1H2022 and when you log into any of these systems pre-production production or development you will see the old version of 2H2021 okay in May 20 when you log into May 20 in any of these systems you will see the latest version of 1H2022 because release happened release happened on 15th april in preview and 20th may in production for all the customers of that particular region okay so this is you know, for us customers it happens in in their friday midnight which is mornings of india early hours of us is morning of you morning of india so when you log into any of the customers who are in us region on 16th april morning you will see the 1h2022 release for them so all this data center operates in their own time zone And the type of release uh, SAP is uh, giving or the type of ch changes in the features uh, that SAP is doing, it will be same for all the dat data centers. It is, yes, it is same for all the customers. The product is getting location. updated. Irrespective of location. The product is getting updated. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's like your you know, if you are in India, if you are celebrating your birthday, so you'll be celebrating at 12 a.m. in the midnight, right? Mm -hmm. If you are in yeah. India, you'll celebrate 12 a.m. of India. If you are in US, you'll, you'll celebrate your birthday on the, on that particular day at 12 a.m. Right? Mm -hmm. 12 a.m. Yeah. of that country. The same thing happens here as well. Okay. Okay. Now, yeah. All the new features that have come in this release, you'll find the information in here. What's new viewer? New H, new one H available now. Just click on it. You see here, there are around 361 new features. Now, all of these are new features. Oh my god. Okay. Now so these are the 361 new release features that have come in 1H2022 for all the modules. Now, if you are working in Employee Central, you can filter on the modules. So let's say only on Employee Central. I want to see only the features of Employee Central. So go to product, search for Employee Central, and say okay. You have 108. 
within employee central it is not mandatory that every customer should know all the new features no whatever is applicable for them you can filter on those sub modules as well so within module you see here employee central here and you have the feature as well here within employee central you have business rules candidate profile clock in clock out contingent workforce now if something is not relevant for your customer your customer is not using contingent workforce so you can exclude this if your customer is not using global assignment you can exclude them if your customer is not using you know, integration packages you can exclude them so you can select only the relevant or the features that are applicable for your customer and see those new features now if you see here configuration type you see admin opt in admin opt out universal because last release we didn't had any provisioning opt ins we have admin opt in and admin opt out admin opt in means if you want to use that functionality you need to do some configuration you need to enable or we need to check something admin opt out means by default this is enabled for all the customers and you don't want to use it you have to go and remove that check that is admin opt out and then universal you don't have to do any configuration by default you will see that change on, on 15th of april or 20th of may excuse me yes uh, in the configuration type you have showed uh, three types of uh, features actually one is like universal yes. admin opt-in and admin opt-out yes. uh, previously you said that for universal features no need of any configuration anything for only yes. admin opt-in and all uh, we need to configure uh, on our own you said but yes. in this admin there are two types one is like opt-in and opt-out for opt-in yes. you said that you need to configure for your customer if it is required yes. for that customer yes. regarding yes. the opt-out i did not get can you repeat once again yeah admin opt-in now we call it admin opt-ins even if it is opt-in or opt-out we call it admin opt-ins now opt-in means if you want to use it you need to enable it okay okay now opt-out means by default after that release okay you will see that option selected by default for all the customers now universal so like there is uh, no universal features yeah. only it's, it will get updated in the uh, 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 that feature uh, what will get uh, in the sap only it will get updated you are saying defaultly yeah let me show you let me give you an example So let's we take an example of action for all plans. Now here we see these are the options under manage company settings. These are the options that we have. Now success factors updates these features. Okay. Now we have an option of disable local base number format. This option was not available earlier, but now after this release 1x 2022 we can see this option as well disable locate base number format if it is admin opt-in by default this is unchecked you if you want to use this feature you have to go and enable this feature and say save now this is enabled for your customers here now if it is admin opt-out by default it is enabled and you have to go and uncheck this this is unchecked. Which are the feature we don't require? We need to uncheck it. Yes, that is admin opt out. You are opting out the feature, or if you want to use that feature, you have to opt in. Opt there is no difference actually. Opt in or opt out, you need to do some configuration. If you want to use it, select it. If you don't want to use it, unselect it. Now, some okay. features by default they are selected by SAP. 
if you don't want to use it you go and unselect it uncheck it okay okay this feature is opt in and opt out it comes under provisioning or instance and no. uh, provisioning opt ins or provisioning opt outs are different now let me okay. see all the features now 361 features go to provisioning because if it comes type. under provisioning as per my understanding only a certified consultant can do that yes now the last release we didn't had any provisioning options here yeah now if i select and it's 2021 and Two is twenty twenty one. Okay, now you have around eight hundred six features, and here you see provisioning options and provision options. Last release we had provisioning options. The same thing, provisioning options and provisioning options. You have to log into provisioning and opt in or opt out that feature. If it is opt-in, you have to enable. If it is opt-out, you need to un uncheck it. If you don't want to use it, if you want to use it, you can continue. Okay. Okay, fine. Okay. Now let me go back to one H twenty twenty two. In one H twenty twenty two, we don't have any provisional provisioning provisioning options. We have only universal admin opt-in. Now each feature, now well, these are the features. See, these are all the features. Each feature, if you want to read more of you or if you want to know more about this feature, now you see this is a universal feature. This is universal feature. These are all universal features. Okay. And you see this is admin opt-in. And any feature, if you want to read more, you can go just click on see more. It explains you in detail about that feature. Okay, and for some release features, you also see some video recordings. So now here, mass upload of Spark Awards. Now this one, let me do one thing. I'll filter only on Employee Central. see here this is a video wherever you see this link hyperlink that means a video recording is available there's no sound for this video you can just go and watch the video and this is just for your understanding where you have to go how to navigate okay, okay how to configure in uh, in your system for that purpose the video is there yes now some features no you may not understand if you go and read or you no know, just go through that feature so in that case you will also find the recording okay it's a small video clip one minute or no, less than a minute now this has got a video this has got a video and if you want to see the features you can click on see more and it explains you now what is changed here some for some of them you will also see the screenshots what is changed now you have request type and object here earlier we didn't have that request type option this is changed how it looks now okay it explains you what is this release feature now for configuration or for admin opt-ins now this is admin opt-in you click on see more you will see the configuration what configuration you have to do you see here role based permission is a prerequisite you have to go to this place and then manage higher configuration templates you need to configure this to see this change okay for all admin opt ins and admin opt outs you will find the configuration steps as well what you have to do you see here configuration requirements set the employee private contribution allowed field to yes 
the private contribution is applicable for the insurance plan. To enable the private contribution field on employee central skill, include the field in standard benefit and goal. No, you need to do this. Okay. So every release, it is as a consultant, it is your responsibility to download all the release features. Now, these release features you can download them. Either you can download all of them or select or apply filters and download CSV. Click on CSV, it downloads uh, it downloads to Excel. CSV. And these are the new features. Now, what we have to do is as soon as the release happens, Okay, now this what's new here, this gets updated one week before it, you know, before you see the release in preview systems. If it is on 15th of April, if it, if it is expecting on 15th of April, on 10th or before 10th, you will get to see this document. Or you will get to see this information. You download and go through all of these release features. What are each of these release features? And here, for your customer, if you're working for a customer, I just add applicability. Yes, no, yes, no, go to use, accept. Either yes or no. If it is applicable for your customer, it is yes. If it is not applicable for your customer, say no. Now there, are, there is a new feature which has come in the system which can be good to use feature, which is a good to use feature. So you can recommend this feature for your customer. Let customer decide whether they want to use it or not. Okay, so you add all of these things and share it with your customer. You have to prepare a PPT, PowerPoint presentation, with all the changes, what are the changes that have come in this release? Okay, what is that about? If possible, take a screenshot and add screenshots to your PPT and you need to present it to your customer. Because the end users, because end users should know what are the changes that have come in. Maybe the process is changed, maybe the screen is changed or maybe the look and feel is changed, maybe the functionality is changed. End user should be notified or trained. Right? Uh, Ravi, I have two questions. Uh, first yeah. is how as a consultant uh, we'll come to know that there is a release on a specific date. And the second question is uh, will there be any question in certification exam related to release management? Yeah, that's why when you open the certificate, when certification, it says here 2H2021. Now 2H2021 means, now today if you go and try to do certification of this module, you will not see any questions related to the new features, what you see here in what's new viewer because the version in which you are getting certified is 2H2021. Now in a, another week or 10 days, this will change to 1H2022. Every six months, even your certification version will also change. Now, next one week or 10 days, you will see this as 1H2022 and you will see some questions related to the new features as well. So if it is updated to 1H2022, then after that, if we write the exam, that will also, those questions also will get included regarding yes. that release also. Yes. Before that release gets happened, uh, if you write the exam, till the previous release and all, it will be applicable. Yes. yes. Only those features which were there in that release. Okay. So Up what will be the correct? what will be the correct timing to write an exam because if we are writing an exam immediately after there is a release we are not aware of the new features yeah you see that's here, what 
till now, april and may we will be having yeah. may 20 mm-hmm. it happened in production okay, okay. so now, after, in coming yeah. july or august if we appear for june, exam by june end mm-hmm. by june end you will see the new new uh, certification mm-hmm. okay. Okay. till june end now after after the release happens in production one month from the release in production you will see okay. the certificate new certification again same mm-hmm. thing november 18th in december 20th by 20th you will see 2h2022 version as a 2h2022 till then you will see 1h2022 starting from jan 20th you will see 1h2022 till november or december 20 okay so the uh software that will be using or the sap product that we will be using right now for training will be the latest version latest version yes now this is my version if i want to see what is the version i'm using you see you have here show version information click on show version information release it says b2205 2205 means 22 is a year 05 is month may okay so in the month of may it got updated okay next release you will see it as b2211 november mm-hmm. next okay. release you will see 2305 2311 2405 mm-hmm. 2411 okay okay so that's about your release information mm mm-hmm. okay so we'll stop it here for today we'll continue tomorrow uh ravi i guess you skipped my one question uh as a consultant uh, do we get any mail regarding this release uh, that no. happens every 6 months how do we come no, to know every no community.successfactory.com you need to no see here these are the dates mm-hmm. right now you know that the next release is going to happen in october 14 mm mm-hmm. you will also be getting a uh, to your official email id you will also be getting the information okay. and before october 14th you will see some webinars happening now sap would be conducting some webinars on the new release features if okay. you enroll for that you will get notifications of that mm-hmm. okay. okay yeah or if you are a certified consultant you will be getting the uh, email notification saying that a new release is going to happen and so on so forth okay fine that's what okay. i want to know back yeah yeah or you can also before october 14th just october 10th or 11th you can come to come to community.successfactors.com and see if there are any updates in the releases okay okay every customer will be notified before release mm-hmm. and if there is any release in provisioning then only a consultant is supposed to do that otherwise if it is otherwise, not in yeah. provisioning the uh, yeah. customer uh, can update that in their own system yes okay now because of the release only see now every customer who is using success factors they need a support consultant mm-hmm. they cannot do all these things on their own yeah because the configuration knowledge only consultants will have customer will mm-hmm. not have configuration well knowledge mm mm-hmm. customer will have the product knowledge how to use the product how to hire an yeah. employee or how to maintain the data but mm-hmm. what configuration is making that screen available or making that field available on the screen that is done by consultants so just because of this release every customer goes with the support consultants okay now it is our responsibility to make them understand about the new release features mm-hmm. okay yeah okay then. Oh.